Yes. So you're the dreg Comb found gutting the testament. Good for him, I say. Looks like you can do some damage. Name's Aeth. Black Aeth to some. If you're half as skilled as Colm says, then I'd like to make an arrangement with you. He's quiet. Probably knows all his letters by the looks of him. More at home in a library than these ruins. He's earnest enough, but who knows whether he can hold his own in a fight. Aeth Dunbert is dead. She was killed two years ago when the Testament burned her farm to nothing. I'm now the fury and vengeance of all the Testament's victims, and I have come to collect. A cowardly man. A few battles don't make a warrior. He may find something to fight for, then again, he might not. I'm not much on history, but from what I've seen, that ruin sprawls under the whole canyon. If you see a place you can't get to over land, odds are the tomb will get you to it. It was a nice place to be once, before the Testament decided to move in. The Testament has swept through the Feylands like wildfire. A few years back, they came to my farm, salted the earth, left not a stone standing. They tore my husband to pieces in front of me. Their mistake was to let me live. I have a chance to make them suffer, and my plan takes two. I don't rightly know, Dreg. Why don't you go ask them? Sorry. The Testament... They believe death to be salvation for all. But though they killed my family, they let me live. The bastards thought I would join their cult. Good, but we're not just going to hunt them down. We'll poison a few, and then dump the bodies into the Testament's water supply. When those bastards start choking on their own water, they'll regret letting me live. Their water flows from a cistern nearby. We'll need to go through the tomb of Aragnos to reach it. I'll meet you in the ruins. I want to poison a few of these Testament bastards and dump their bodies into the cistern. That'll corrupt the cult's water supply. When their insides start to burn, when they see the corpses of their brethren tainting the water, I want them to remember the life they took from me. Then it's finished. In a few hours, those bastards will know what we did here. That's... that's it then. Two years of planning, of tracking, finished. I thought... I didn't know what would happen. But I don't feel anything. I've killed how many of the Testament, and I feel nothing at all. You're... you're right. I didn't murder them so that they could find salvation. I only wanted justice. I didn't know what the Testament was up to when I first came, but I found these on one of the ones I killed. I don't know much about this Niskaru for Agnos, but the Testament is interested in him. From now on, I'll keep two eyes on their doings. So you're the one my brother dragged here? Why? Did he tell you to save me from the Testament's influence? You are both fools. I joined of my own volition. Do you need proof? Look to the bodies at your feet. You gaze upon my work. Because they offered me what no one else could. A chance to grow. To do what has never been done. I always wanted control. And the Testament will supply me with all the subjects I require. You are correct. I am better than the rest of the Testament. Being a servant of Balin has made me more powerful than ever. I did not think Giran's resolve could fall so fast. You heard what he said. For Agnus, waking? There is more to the Testament's presence here. In Giran's name we must find what they want. I would be lying if I said her rage did not frighten me. I heard the Testament left her alive to suffer with deep wounds of grief. I think they will regret their decision. I can see in your eyes that you have come to the same conclusion we have. Thank the gods. The Testament is on the cusp of raising the Nescaru Lord, Feragnus. When they do, all of Detir will be plunged into flame. Agreed. Unfortunately, we are too late. 
The beast has already entered this world. I can sense its presence. But Feragnus is weak now. It will take some time for him to develop, to mature. We should strike while we have the chance. Given enough time, Feragnus will develop into a full Niskaru Lord. But while in a juvenile state, it is vulnerable. We just have to get there and hope we are strong enough to fight it. We are all going in there together. We may have come for different reasons, but none of us will leave this unfinished. It seems that Feragnus has housed itself in the complex at the end of the canyon. The only way in is through the catacombs of his tomb. We will meet you in there. Now, let us move. Curse it all. The testament was cleverer than I gave them credit for. From the look of things, this door will only open if someone is standing on the switch back there. We don't have time to break down the door. Someone is going to have to stay behind to keep this open. Unwise. We all have some experience in combat, but you have the most by far. You have to face Veragnus. Very well. You have to keep going and stop Feragnus before it is too late. I will... I will be fine, truly. We're still standing, and Feragnus has fallen. We struck a mighty blow here, Dreg, but the Testament's still out there, planning more atrocities, more murder. They won't try resurrecting this thing again, not under my eye. Now I'm getting out of here. It's calmed down somewhat. But that tomb of Feragnos is a beacon to the Testament. Don't know if there will ever be true peace. Looks like I'm in luck. Didn't expect to see so heavily armed an adventurer wandering into our camp. Are you interested in a job? I've got a fey beast situation I need taken care of. Excellent. A pack of wild fey have holed up at the Canyon Hill site at the top of the ledge. I've already dispatched a scholar to investigate, but he hasn't returned. You'll find him near the road towards the mine. I'll have more information for you there. But it isn't useful for much else. The coward refuses to go near the fae. Get to the site and figure out why those blasted things have come out of the mine. And then get rid of them. Speak to the scholar when the deed is done. He'll pay you. Oh, where are my manners? Form and fire at your service. This here is Motus Mining's latest outfit and my care and charge. They were our biggest competition, and they discovered this site, actually. When we caught wind of it, we made sure to get up here with a bag of gold for each of his workers. So they promised to work for us instead, of course. Work like a charm. <laughs> Poor Edgar Edder never found a way to recover from that. There's no one else to run his mine. He probably couldn't find the money to pay them even if he found new staff. <laughs> if I sound proud of us, it's cause I am. It was a big victory for Motus. I've seen some strange things, flickers and flashes from the top of that mountain. No idea what causes it, and I don't want none. We've got our hands full down here as it is. Is a weak-eyed, knock-kneed, biscuit-biting excuse for a scholar. But he's the one I've got, so that's that. A forsaken, wretched wasteland with more beasts than grains of sand. Still, by the dooms of Odessa, I'll not see this venture fail. If it weren't for the beast lurking at our doorstep every day, I'd find this place quaint. As it is, I can barely retain my sanity. Capstan Odvar runs an inn and serves as our chief of security. I receive reports of strange happenings in those caverns. One of the workers claimed he saw horrifically scarred men wandering near Saltwell Mouth. Our scholar, Inser, ought to be at the Canyon Hill site, getting to the bottom of this damn holdup. He ought to be back already, telling me how he fixed it. If you do see him, give him a kick for me and tell him to get on with it. I've got miners just standing around not mining! Ah, they're cowards, the whole lot of them. They came scurrying back, complaining about the passage to Canyon Hill site, blocked by Fay. Now they won't go near the eastern ledge and me without a single Praetorian to deal with them. You. You are my contact. <laughs> I should have known. Punctuality is not one of your people's strengths. 
and you have so few. Edessa is the greatest bastion of knowledge and understanding in the world. Alfar have their hearts, mankind as its gods, but our only commandments are the solid, predictable laws of natural science. His knowledge is invaluable and must not fall into the wrong hands. And I'm terribly worried about his safety too, of course. That goes without saying. As Templar, the Forum demands that I do everything in my power to advance our knowledge. It is a tremendous responsibility, and one I take quite seriously. Formerus Hughes is one of my most brilliant scholars, and as you know, his research shows tremendous potential. His recovery is of paramount importance. My fellow Templars and I sponsor research that will lead to the betterment of all mortals. Sadly, Alfar and Man alike often have trouble accepting the reason behind our decisions. But most gnomes realize we have their best interests in mind. You may recall our mutual friend, former Hughes. The gnome who brought you back to life? I suspect you would. But I gather you've been quite busy. Well, Scholar Hughes has been missing since the attack on his tower. As his patron, I am quite concerned. I want you to find him. You are, how shall I say, uniquely suited to the task. I could ask the same question. For all I know, former Hughes is on the run from you. I am willing to assume that's not the case. Simply put, you may be my only chance of locating Hughes. Just as I may be yours. Don't be obtuse. I am his patron. As such, I own everything that Scholar Hughes produces. I suppose that includes you as well. The secrets in his laboratories are meant for gnome eyes only. They must be controlled. At any cost. It would seem the incident in Alistar made Scholar Hughes a touch, uh, paranoid. Every time we receive a clue about his location, he vanishes before I can reach him. But he's running out of places to hide. It's my opinion that there's one hope left to finding Hughes. You. And I am grateful. Scholar Hughes is quite fortunate to have friends like us. Use as an old laboratory in the cavern of Saltwell Mines. I believe he's been conducting research there since the destruction of Alistar Tower. Find him, and you will be rewarded for your contribution to science. I will await your success in the Lavrarium in Edessa. He may have returned to his old laboratory in Saltwell Mines, but if any of my people approach, he'll flee. He's quite paranoid, for good reason. Have I been down here so long? Is the madness so great that I see the faces of the damned before me? Or, or is it really you? It is! By the tome! Come closer. Let me look at you. It has been an eternity since I've seen a trusted face. Are you? In many ways, your awakening has brought me nothing but misery. But that is not your fault. I am to blame for all of it. Wait, do you hear that sound? It could be the sons of Laz, but it could be someone else. The last we spoke, it was the Tuatha that reduced my lab to cinders. Now it's assassins. Everywhere I go, destruction follows. I have grown so weary of it, my friend. All I ever wanted was to unlock death's secrets, to shed light on the shadows. I never wanted this. Thank you. For more than just your protection, for being the one good thing to come of this disaster. I have few friends, but I gladly count you among them. You must be mistaken. I've tried to contact him ever since I fled Alistair, but he never replied. Until now. Octien. Of course. When all the facts are considered, the truth will emerge. Ah, oh, I am a fool! Octien has sent you to search for me. To have us killed together. Those assassins are proof of this. The Well of Souls is his project. Once it was functioning, he no longer needed me. Not if he could salvage the Well in Alistar with Ventrenio's help. 
husband, Trinio de Cellini. We used to work together in this lab on projects sponsored by Templar Octien. But when we were tasked with creating the well, Ventrenio sought to use any means at our disposal, regardless of the implications or consequences. Eventually, he was taken away, and I was sent to work at Alistar. But it seems he continued his work here, long enough to create those monsters. They are the animated dead, early experiments in the field of immortality. They will forever haunt these cursed caverns. Ventrinio named them after a mythical figure who rose from the dead. He looked on them and saw potential. I see only abominations. No, not me. But Ventrinio's old notes suggest that he may know a way into Alabastra. I wonder, perhaps, is it possible that you have met Ventrinio already? That would explain it. You were attuned to his well, but raised from mine. Unfortunately, the only way to find Ventrinio is to go through Templar Octien, which will not be easy now that we know of his treachery. Never. The only voice he wishes to hear is his own. We cannot deal with Octien within the boundaries of Edessa. Not alone. There is one who has the power to discredit him. Templar Joriel. She is reputed for her wisdom and strength of character. And, as I recall, she and Octien do not exactly see eye to eye on matters of policy. If Joriel can make Octien answer for his crimes, then we will gain access to his information. That includes the location of Ventrinio's lab. If you wish to uncover the mystery of your death, then you will need Ventrinio. He is the key to Alabastra. Find Templar Joriel in Edessa. We don't have much evidence, but I have a feeling she will help us. Ah, Adessa, the great gnomish city-state. Knowledge, reason, and logic rule there, as do bureaucracy and intrigue. A clever gnome can go far in that city, and a wise gnome goes far away from it. It's everything I've been able to put together concerning Templar Octien's crimes, with supporting evidence from Ventrinio's notes and correspondence. I always suspected I might need leverage over Octien. It seems Ventrinio felt the same. You must remember to thank him for me. I am Fomorus Hughes, scholar of vivification prime circle. The well of souls was my life's work. I knew Octen was more interested in my research than he was in my well-being, but I didn't expect him to send assassins. At least not so soon. Now that he has the well and Ventrinio, he'll have access to eternal life all for himself. And who knows what other magical protections he's collected over the decades. He thinks he's won, but we know his dirty little secrets. And believe it or not, that means we've got the real power. My old colleague, Ventrinio Dessalini. For a time we worked together under Templar Octien. He was a brilliant scholar, but a terrible person. I told Octien he couldn't be trusted and refused to work with him, but it appears the Templar simply moved him to another lab with some mysterious assistant. Ventrinio's notes reference some highly capable assistants that joined him in testing the well and collecting Prismia, but there's no mention of their identity. Whoever they are, they're clever, resourceful, and very dangerous. If we could find them, we might have a lead, or even a way into Alabastra. The Templars rule from the Forum, and you can't get a thing done in the city without the sponsorship of one of them. They can be powerful allies, but the one thing you don't want to do is get on their bad side. Oh, don't call it that. You're just having a talk with Octien in the library. In return for your discretion, he'll give us what we want. I know it's unpleasant, but when you work with the Templars, you just start thinking this way. It helps you stay alive. I watch them day by day, their foolish meddling scampering to separate one piece of earth from a slightly different piece of earth. They know that the land will endure, will heal any wounds mortals can inflict. But I worry that these wounds may be long to heal. I cannot act. I am bound by our beliefs. 
but an agent of change could cauterize these wounds by making the century plants bloom. Have you met her? Fair and dark as the night itself. She will sleep until my time is past. Then I will lie down and dream while she walks the sands. I shepherd the surface while Orenda sleeps beneath. I await the day when I may lay down to rest as Orenda does beneath the sands. The mortal's growing influence in this world wearies me. Normally they blossom only every hundred years. The land stirs and wakens, and what was worn away rejuvenates. That is the way of things. In ages past, we danced in circles on the dunes and sang sweet songs to the distant peaks. Now I alone walk here, while Arenda dreams in reverie below. The little mortals, you mean? Forever cut. Clearing, digging, will they never stop? Won't they tire of it and go away? Oh, I cannot make them bloom, not now. When the time is right, one fay whisper will do. You mortals are not bound as we are. You can grow such things out of season. You wouldn't know with these little mortals here, but these lands are a fay place and fey places need refreshing from time to time. The blooming of the century plants is the fastest route of recovery. The century plants have deep ties to the pulse and marrow of the land. Their breath wakens the desert, causes the rocks to stir and grow. A friend of the sands, you'll do what needs doing. You will need Petricar. Here is a skinful I have gathered. But first, you must ready the plant with fire. Only after fire will they drink the petrichor. There are three century plants in this land just now. Make all three bloom, and all will be well. For each of the three upon the sands, scorch it with fire, then slake it with the petrichor I gave you. The smell of the earth after rain. I have gathered it over years in that skin. Oh, I'm in a terrible bind. I don't dare go forward, and I certainly can't go back. Mind you, I wouldn't go up that eastern ledge. It's most unsafe. Oh, yes. Our stalwart foreman. He sent you after me, I suppose. It's a place of mystery and intrigue. No one knows what luck's at the top, though everyone's got a guess. Scholar of mineralogy, motus mining, and unwitting adventurer. A pleasure to make your acquaintance, I'm sure. Odessa could not have been built without the motus mining interest. I've heard tales of terrifyingly scarred men appearing at the entrance of the caverns from time to time. I don't care why they're there. I just don't want them anywhere near me. Yes. Well, well, no. I got ten paces up the slope when I spotted those fey. What's a scholar to do against hordes of vicious beasts? One of those boggarts. It shook its fist at me. Yes, and find out what's wrong. Now that I've found it, and have no desire to investigate further. There were boggarts, lots of boggarts, and I think I saw a thresh. I was rather too busy running to note the particulars. Well, if you were willing to go first, I would have no objection to trailing behind at a safe distance. To the Canyon Hill site at the top of the ledge, where a cadre of fey awaits to rip us to shreds, no doubt. Another come to steal the light, come to trouble the reverie. I long to return to the reverie. While Calivar walks the sands, I must sleep. He and I are two where there once were many. 
We lived then wild on dune and crag. Now he watches the waking day, and I tend to the dreaming murmurs of the stone. When I became aware the light was gone, the shell of the reverie cracked, and my dream self wandered free. Long, long ago, I wandered lost in the dark of night. I cried a pool into a rocky basin, and starlight gathered there. I fashioned this into a jewel, and by its light found my way home. Is it any wonder that I hold it so dear? They are my friends, drawn here as I drift between the dream world and the world of the waking. The light, source of solace, snuck in, sharp knives, soft feet, stole the jewel from my side. Took it northward, through the narrow rocks, to their village of wood and cloth. It's beginning to make sense. This fame maiden is real, but I believe we're speaking to a projection of her as she dreams. There is a fey hollow under this mine, where I'll wager she sleeps, and these other fey, they're drawn to the power of this projection. Restoring to her this light she speaks of might calm things down. Find me at the Motus Mining Office when you return it to her. I'll make sure you're duly compensated. No, I feel quite certain. The maiden we see here is a projection of her dream self, as she calls it. The real fae is asleep somewhere in the hollow below us, I'll wager. And these other wild fae are drawn to the power she exudes while in this form. Most likely return what was stolen to the fae maid within the hollow. That is how these things tend to go. The light! Return to me! Did you do this? The blessings of the thorn and shadow be upon your head, little mortal. Now leave me to the reverie, and the deep shadow and the far wind sighs. I long to return to the reverie. While Calivar walks the sands, I must sleep. This is home, the place of power. I can feel the mortal's presence above, taking, chipping away at the land. Calivar will not be pleased. Now I have the light, the reverie will be untroubled. Now leave me be, little one. Leave me be. A fey relic? Was that it? She called it a light. I wonder what possessed those fools to steal it. No matter. Facts are, without you, I'd still be tugging my beard at the bottom of that slope. So please have this. The interest rewards those who smooth its way. Foreman Vyer? Head harder than a rock, and emptier than a mined-out stoke. All this caused by a stolen jewel. Remarkable. As I've always said, there's no understanding fey. All the same, we ought to have known we were digging right above a fey hollow. Didn't seem important at the time, I suppose. You look well armed. Aren't you here about the Krullock? We have a vicious one on our hands. It's about the desert, killing any workers it can catch. How in blazes it developed a taste for gnome flesh, only that damn thing knows. Confound it. Between the Canyon Hill incident and that beast, our schedule's ground to a halt. They were the first mining operation here in the Hollowlands. Foreman by the name of Edgar Aaron. Rumor has it he spent every coin he had building his mine. When Motus moved in, they waved bags of gold in the faces of Aaron's workers. The next day, they all jumped ship. It's tragic, but it's business. We don't know where it got a taste for the gnome miners, but it's been terrorizing the Dunehead mine. Motus is offering a considerable bounty for its demise. Once word got out that Edgar Aaron had found this mineral-rich site, Motus rushed to get an operation set up here. I'm all the muscle they bothered to send. I'm the lone guard Motus hired to protect this place. They've given me a chief of security title, but that means nothing when I've got no men to command. Now we've got a Kruduk that's more than a match for a small army. I know better than to go out there alone. No one knows what's at the top of Cloudcrest, but that don't stop folks speculating. I've heard the first face set foot in Armalor came from there. That'd explain why there are so many of them in Detir. I've heard bizarre tales about those caves. 
The workers swear they've seen ghastly men, ravaged by some plague or, or foul magic, pacing round the entrances. You got the picture. Don't know how the damned old thing got a taste for him, but once it gets an idea, there's no stopping it. We've put a price on its hide, but who'd be crazy enough to earn it? Well, you sure? All right, it's your funeral. You should speak to Edgar Aaron of Aaron Excavations. He'll know how to find Bloodbane. Edgar's lived in the Hollowlands longer than any of us. We don't have separate rooms, but we've got beds upstairs. It'll cost you, though. We're the closest thing to an inn for leagues around us. Are you enjoying your stay? Those beds aren't luxurious, but they're better than sleeping on the ground. I've heard the rumours. They might be saints or bastards, but they've coin to spare and that's enough for me. Know it as well as my own calloused hand. That's why they pay me good gold to sit here. You won't find much on the surface here, but trapped below is the salvation of Odessa's future. We've the raw materials under our feet to equip entire armies. And that's why you'll find Motus mining and, such as it is, Aaron Excavations digging here. He's the foreman of the other mine here. He knows a thing or two about the Hollowlands. Been surveying this place long before Motus moved in. He ran Aaron Excavations until Motus hired his workers out from under him. It's tough, but that's business. I'm not sure what he's up to these days, but he hasn't left. Aaron Excavations? They're the other mining operation in the Hollowlands, Motus's only competition. Not particularly stiff competition, mind you. Especially since Motus wooed all of Aaron's miners with much higher wages. Canyon Hill is up the eastern ledge. That's the one that spooked the miners. The dune head operation's hardly begun thanks to a vicious crudock. Speak to Edgar Aaron of Aaron's Excavations. He's been in the Hollowlands longer than any of us. He'll know how to find Bloodbane. I'll warn you, though, Edgar's bitter about Motus luring away his workers away with higher wages. He probably finds the situation ironic now that Bloodbane is attacking Dunehead Mine. There's no work here for you, stranger. Check with Motus if you're looking for a job. You'll not find one with us. I've lived in the Hollowlands for a time. Seen lights and heard rumbles from the top that could have been the world's quietest storm, or very powerful magic. Mark my words, there's something happening up there. I've spent a lot of time here in the Hollowlands, living off the soil and the wildlife. I thought I'd finally made a living for myself when I discovered the mineral deposits here. Not sure what I'll do now that Motus has stolen my workers, but I'll think of something. Motus will get there someday. They call themselves a mining operation. They're more like a thieves' den. I was in the Hollowlands long before they ever set up shop. Once they got settled, they offered better wages to my workers. Every single one of them is working for Motus now. I couldn't compete with that kind of money. I hired a small army of gnomes to help me with the mine. Spent a lot of money transporting them here and gave them a good living. And the miserable bastards have the gall to leave me for Motus. Capstan sent you my way, did he? Yes, I'm familiar with old Bloodbane. This Crudock is extremely protective of a particular pack of brownies. The surest way to draw it out of hiding is to attack those brownies. They help Bloodbane hunt, you see. I'll mark their territory on your map for you. Good luck. No one's been able to best the creature yet, and it would be unfortunate if you didn't make it back. I can smell them on the dry winds. Your eyes may not see the natural decay, but I assure you, it is there. The little meddlers may do their worst. The Hollowlands will endure it and mend the wounds they make. I've been hoping you'd come by. The miners report no sight or sound of Bloodbane since you ventured out into the desert. That means they can start work on the Dunehead site and that you've earned your pay. Thank you for ridding us of that menace. If you hadn't happened along, who knows where we'd be? And whatever that thing calls a stomach, I suppose. You're welcome here any time, friend. Though there's not much to do but swing a pick at rocks. Oh, thank goodness you're here. It's my miners. They've gone deranged. Bless my beard. Just as both sides were coming back to full operation. 
The lunatics fled out into the desert. I tried to stop one of them and saw nothing but a blank stare and, and a strange light behind the fellow's eyes. He looked cursed. This is the work of that fay, the one who sits atop the hill on the outskirts of town. If you can find that fay and make him fix this, you'll be duly compensated. Damn right, there's no other explanation. He calls himself Calovar. Polite enough fellow, I suppose, but I've never trusted him. When we first got this operation up and running, he'd appear out of the sands every once in a while and try to convince us to move out. It's so obvious now. I'll bet he was behind the other problems as well. The Crudduck, the attack on Canyon Hill, all of it reeks of fey magic. Gulliver watches the mine from his perch on the hill to the south. You'll find him there. What are you here for, Martel? I'll not suffer another child of dust. I've had enough of your lot. Especially those of you calling yourselves Edgar Aaron. What a bizarre query. Your miner's plight is not my doing. If you look to rectify their situation, then we share a foe. The mortal that calls itself Edgar Aaron is to blame. Curing the miners of their affliction requires an implement, a fey relic I gave to this mortal. Take the relic from him and find your miners. It is the only way to free them from their madness. The marshal and I made a verbal contract. I would give him use of my light to help him clear the wild fay from his mine. In return, he agreed to gather his resources with my relic rather than the little mortal's methods, ripping and tearing at the land. He has instead shown his true quality, and now your miners are scattered to the winds. He has fled to his mine. If you truly wish to save the little mortals wandering the sands, you must retrieve my relic from him. You would do well to bring it back to me as well, when you have claimed it. It is a powerful relic and could do much harm in the wrong hands. I have heard mortals refer to it as a stone or a jewel. Vast oversimplifications, as children of dust are wont to make. It is my light as Orenda's lantern is hers. Edgar Aaron asked to borrow my relic to use in his mine, to draw the minerals the mortals find so valuable. I thought him worthy of friendship, and thus gave it to him. Alas, he has deviated from his purpose. The Craddock attacks, the theft of Orenda's lamp, and now this. All of this petty sabotage is his doing, made possible by my relic. You found me, stranger. Been speaking to Calavar, have you? You've been putting out fires for motors all over the place, I hear. What can I do for you this time? You've spoken to the Fey, I presume. I thought I saw you scaling that cliff. He wasn't lying. I wanted motors gone. But I never meant to take it this far. If he'd just packed up his damn operation, nobody would have been harmed. I did. With this little stone Calavar gave me, simply thinking a thing makes a wild fade do it. Unfortunately, I couldn't keep old Bloodbane from falling for your brownie bait. Calavar told me all about it, and how detrimental it would be if it were taken. Then I just had to tell a couple of gullible cutthroats about this incredibly valuable fey relic buried in Shadowthorn Hollow. I... Perhaps there is merit in cooperating with you. You kill Crodoc and spelunk fey hollows for a living, after all. But if Motus doesn't leave the Hollowlands, I'm finished. There's no turning back for me. Kill this pest, boys! No, please spare me! I was just trying to make a living here! Success should have been mine. I started my operation long before Motus ever arrived. My workers have abandoned me, and I haven't made a single coin from this place. This was all I could do to reclaim what once belonged to me. You understand, don't you? Fine. It's yours. Damn thing never did me any good anyway. I'm sure the Odessan Praetorians won't be far behind me now that the word's out. I won't be here when you return. Well, it looks like everyone's back or on their way. We're in your debt once more. Edgar's facilities are vacant now. 
They're yours if you want them. They were never particularly profitable once his miners left him. But in the right hands, a few of the miners feel so indebted to you, they'd like to work there for you if you'll have them. You should visit the mine when you have a chance. I shall relieve you of the relic. For a mortal, you are remarkable. I can see something lingering in your eyes, something fey. It is both fascinating and perplexing. But, as you mortals say, the dust has settled. This region was on the verge of catastrophe, thanks to Edgar Aaron. It was fortunate you were here to stop him. Hail, friend. The gnomes at Modus Mining mentioned you'd be opening a mining site here. That's all well and good, but I can help you make the most of it. For a small sum, I'll renovate this mine for you, make it bigger. In the long run, you'll earn more money out of it. What do you say? That's me, Master Architect at your service. Your friends at Modus Mining sent word to me that they were helping you open a site here. For a little bit of gold, I'll help you get this dump running more efficiently than Edgar Aaron ever managed to. No one I know of has scaled it all the way, so there's no knowing for sure what's up there. Heard everything, from it's the home of a powerful mage, to it's the cradle of civilization itself. Sometimes in the same breath. There's an adventure to be had at Cloudcrest Peak, I'm sure. There are bad goings on at the caverns. The miners of all, one time or another, seen wretched, scarred creatures that walk on two legs, pacing at the entrance. If you give me the gold, I can start clearing out one of the collapsed passages in the mine. I'll start cleaning out the passage right away. Who knows what we'll uncover in there. What, you surely ask, is such a well-heeled Praetorian doing here among the dust and brambles? Removing the tarnish for my name and solving the Jotun problem. Grand to behold, but lousy with Jotun and spiders and gods know what else. Makes me think the war sworn put their blasted keep here out of sheer bloody spite. Overlooked. Ignored. Once I've settled this Jotun problem, my Praetorian friends will be humming a different tune. I am, you see, ranked Decanus. That is above Auxiliary, where I serve my time, and beneath Centurion, which is where I belong. Their keep is hard to miss. It sits on Menatir like an Ectin on a pile of bones. The old Ragnar has died, and his successor is stirring the embers of war. But he's too clever to openly provoke the Warsworn, so he's attacking gnomes instead. That will not stand. I have a plan to settle this, but it requires someone of both delicacy and grit. Priest, apothecary, and spiritual guide to Jotunkind. The old Ragnar ruled all the Jotun in these heights and the mountains beyond. If this upstart stirs all of them to war, things could go badly for everyone. The Warsworn have their place in my plan, but not yet. Coaxing the Ragnar to show his face requires a subtlety that our local Castellan lacks. Hmm, yes, I think you do. First, we must find some new and better enemies for the Jotun. Go into Tearscotter Mine, southeast of here, and steal the clan totem from the kobolds that dwell there. Then return to me. To reclaim it, the kobolds will fight to the death, and as for the Jotun, well, one thing at a time. There's a good deal to be said about them. None of it nice. You hear tales now and then of Jotun guards and Jotun soldiers. I'll believe that when I see it. Brutes! Tearscotter mine is full of the little filchers. If you ask me, they're worse than the Jotun. It seems the old Ragnar had some wisdom in that slab of a skull. Kept a shrewd balance between infighting and angering his neighbors. But now he's dead, and the new Ragnar fancies the warpath. 
but that won't be good for anyone. We'll never know if the mine collapsed because of the kobolds, or if the kobolds got in because of the collapse. Either way, it's theirs now. Tierscotter Mine cuts into the hills of southeastern Menatir. I don't know where in the mine the clan totem is kept, but it is there. 